Welcome to Summerlin Church. I'm Peter By. As you can see, we are still in the Christmas spirit, this being the first Sunday after Christmas. And in fact, David Moscovian Caker will be along with the message today, the Holy Spirit of Christmas. Kathleen Seek and Rob Hodges will play O Come All Ye Faithful. And Jenny Slaraw has another wonderful children's story time for all of us, titled Heaven Breaks Through. We hope that heaven breaks through for you in this coming year. And we wish you a new year spent walking in the light of our Lord. And for all of us, walking out of this darkness of the pandemic. Now here's David with the Holy Spirit of Christmas. A Merry Christmas, everyone. I hope that you had a, a, a spiritually meaningful Christmas this year. Obviously, everything looked so different for all of us. And uh, in the midst of that, I pray that you have felt God's love in a, in a way that would, you would have never felt. There's a phrase that says, don't waste a good crisis. And in a sense, this uh, pandemic has been an opportunity for us to grow and develop the way that we've listened to God's voice and leaned into the love of God more fully because so much has been taken away from us in the process. So this Christmas was different, but I, I hope that for you, you have been able to feel God's love fully and richly and deeply in your life. One of the things that I've been thinking about this Christmas time is what's the role of the Holy Spirit in all of this? As I've been reading through the Christmas story, I was struck by how much of this is actually driven by the Holy Spirit. Now, if we were to look at this story of Jesus on a stage, we know that Jesus, the baby, is at the center of the story. The spotlight is on Jesus at the center of it all. But it was fun for me to look at how the Holy Spirit plays into it. So uh, for this talk, I want you to think with me, what is the work of the Holy Spirit at Christmas time? What's the work of the Holy Spirit in the midst of the Christmas story? And ultimately, what's the work of the Holy Spirit in your life and in my life, not only during this Christmas, but on our journeys, our spiritual adventures, digging deeper into the love of Jesus Christ? I'll read just a bit of the Christmas story. This is in Matthew. Uh, it's chapter 1, and I'm starting in verse 18. These are familiar words, but I pray that you hear them in a fresh way and listening for what the role of the Holy Spirit is in this beautiful story. Now, the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. And you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all of this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, Look, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him Jesus. So what is the work of the Holy Spirit in this time? I think in a sentence, it's the work of the Holy Spirit to bring Jesus into human lives. The Spirit was right there at the creation, right in the beginning of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says that in creation, the Spirit of the Lord hovered over the waters. And it's this very nature of the Holy Spirit that is creative, that is one that brings life, that brings form and brings function and brings fulfillment and brings purpose. So similarly, in these opening words on the very first page of Matthew's gospel, writing about the beginning of this new way in which God is loving us through the presence of Jesus Christ in our world, it's no surprise that the creative spirit 
is right there. And it is the spirit that is, in, is bringing Jesus into the world. The spirit is enabling this birth and this new beginning, this new beginning of a, of a, a story of a salvation creation. This is the salvation vision that the mission of Jesus will be to love us fully, to forgive deeply, to rescue all radically, and to save us from being lost and to save us for finding God's kingdom. This is where the salvation story is going, and it's the Holy Spirit that's right there at the new beginning of it all. So it is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring Jesus into humans' lives. It's been the work of the Holy Spirit to bring Jesus into my life and into your life. And as I looked a little deeper, um, the way that the Spirit dances into this narrative is one that I had to shift my perspective on as I kept reading it more and more. On first glance, I was thinking, well, the Spirit just interrupts. I picture Mary and Joseph, and their time, it was a little different from in our time, but there were probably some things that were common within human experience. As Joy and I were engaged, and I've walked alongside so many friends as they're engaged to be married, there's so much excitement and newness and hope. And then to have that time so fully interrupted by the announcement to Mary that she's going to have a baby. That is a major interruption. And it wasn't like God just picked a, a single woman, a single, in this case, likely teenage girl, uh, to bring his son into the world. He, he picked someone who was committed to another guy. So it wasn't just interrupting her life. It was interrupting both of their lives and the lives of their families. So at first, when I was thinking through this, I was like, oh, the spirit interrupts, the spirit disrupts, the spirit surprises. And those things are true from one perspective. From our earthly perspective, that's just looking ahead at the plan. That's looking ahead at what we expect will happen. That's the time when we're saying, this is an interruption. This is a disruption. But from a perspective that is anchored into the narrative of God's love in our lives, which as we look closely, is the narrative that Mary and Joseph both have in their lives, that it's not the disruption that totally derails their expectations or their hopes. But really, the Spirit reorients our allegiance to the love of God, first and foremost. It's not what our plans were or how we thought this engagement time was going to go or how we thought um, this Christmas season was going to play out or how we thought the events of our lives were going to go, how we thought the events of our children's lives were going to play out. Really, what the Holy Spirit is saying is, I'm reorienting your allegiance to the love of God as the first and the primary, the foremost thing. It is the anchor. It is the center of it all. So we've heard this story so many times, and we know this, how this story ends. So it's hard to listen with these fresh ears that think of this major disruption or interruption, but we know that it is that. It's, shoot, I'm so thrown off at this point, sorry. Um, Sure. Um, I'm going to pick it up from it's the work of the Holy Spirit um, to bring Jesus into human lives. Okay. All right. Let me know when we're ready for that. So we see that it is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring Jesus into human lives. The Spirit is bringing Jesus more deeply and more fully, not only into our world in this time of the Christmas story, but also into our world right now and more deeply into my life and into your lives. It is the work of the Holy Spirit 
to bring Jesus into human lives. And as I was looking at the rest of the story with this glasses, my glasses on about what's the Spirit doing in this Christmas story? What is the work of the Holy Spirit in this Christmas story? I actually struggled with it a lot because at first I said, wow, the Spirit is, is an interrupter. I mean, think about how this engagement story is playing out for Mary and Joseph. It's not just like there's one person at play here, there are two people and, and the Holy Spirit comes in and totally interrupts the hope, the ideals, the dreams that they had had. Now there's a baby involved that came from the Holy Spirit. Well, that's a shocker. That's more than an interruption or a disruption. It's bigger than a surprise. This is a total reorientation of what they were expecting. And as I was thinking through what that means for our lives, it is actually the work of the Holy Spirit to reorient our allegiance. And if we look at the reactions and the responses of Mary and Joseph, we see that they are oriented towards the allegiance of having God at the center of it all. Having this major interruption and disruption to their plans didn't actually throw off how they kept walking forward in the love of God, oriented with their allegiance on God's work in their lives. And that's the same for us right now. As we walk more closely towards having God at the center of it all, and we're orienting and reorienting our allegiance to God at the center, we get to walk with God more fully in the midst of disruptions and interruptions. And sometimes those interruptions can be opportunities for the Spirit to break through to wake us up and to bring us back to living with God at the center of it all. If we take a brief look at the life of Joseph in this one, the scripture says that Joseph was a righteous man and he was unwilling to disgrace Mary. He didn't want her open to public disgrace. So we have a righteous man who's trying to do the right thing and he's made a decision. In the midst of this engagement, he has decided that the best thing to do, the best way forward, is just to divorce Mary quietly. And he's got a plan. But one of the beautiful works of the Holy Spirit in this story is that the Spirit also reorients our reactions. In this case, we see the Spirit reorienting Joseph's reaction. His resolve is changed because of how an angel comes and visits him and says, no, Joseph, don't be afraid. Don't do what you thought plan A was. Don't do what you thought was the righteous thing to do. I'm giving you a new story of what the righteousness looks like. Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the child that's within her is from the Holy Spirit. And Joseph said yes. We actually never get a word from Joseph in the gospel stories at all. He never says a single thing. In a a way, he's silent Joe. But through his actions, we know that he said yes to this reorienting work of the Holy Spirit. So I invite us in our lives to think about the ways in which the Holy Spirit is speaking to us right now. If it is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring Jesus into human lives, including at the Christmas story and into our lives more fully now, What does it mean for you? Well, we talked about the Spirit being one who creates, the creative Spirit. And I would think, okay, well, what is the Spirit doing right now for you and for me to bring Jesus deeper into our lives? It's a question you can sit with over the next week. What is the Spirit doing to bring Jesus more deeply into your life? Remember, the Spirit is creative by nature. The Spirit wants new beginnings and wants to bring things more fully to life. So what's the Spirit doing in your life? As we think about the Spirit who reorients our allegiance as well, we can think not of interruptions and disruptions, But we can think of this life of the Spirit more like the movement of a dance. Now, I am not much of a dancer. Joy can tell you that. I have more fun dancing with Joy than I've ever had any other time in my life. But that does not make me a dancer. So for those of you who are dancers, this will probably make more sense to you 
than it makes to me. But move, moving with the Spirit is like movement with a dance. It's taking that next step following the lead of the Holy Spirit that in, in an earthly perspective or in a plan-based perspective, it could look like a major disruption. But like Mary and Joseph, who were able to dance with the Holy Spirit, the one who, as long as our allegiance is oriented towards God, we can say, well, what's the movement that's happening now that the Spirit is doing in your life? And then, ultimately, we see that the Spirit reorients Joseph's actions, and in the exact same way, it can reorient our actions. So there's divine action. There's the Holy Spirit coming in, which is enabling our righteous reaction. What Joseph thought was the righteous move, the angel in the dream said, I've got a better move. So even those of us who think we are walking fully into good, righteous action can totally be reoriented to the deeper righteousness of the Holy Spirit that's saying from the inside out, I want to transform your heart so that your allegiance is to God and to love God with everything you have. And then to walk that out towards loving your neighbors really well. So God's move is grace. What's your follow-up move? What are the reactions that God is calling you into? You know, the work of the Holy Spirit brings Jesus deeper into our lives. The, the work of the Holy Spirit in that sense has been really clear in my life. When, I've told this before, but at this point I think um, it bears just reiterating again. When I was so hungry and thirsty for God when I was a teenager, um, I, wasn't, I, I would not have self-described as following Jesus, but I was really hungry to know what was out there, what was bigger, what was beyond me. I was, had a spiritually curious heart. And I was 13, and I was praying in my bed at night as, as kind of a, a last-ditch effort to God just to hear if there was anything out there. I said, God, if you exist. And what I was going to say was, God, show me a great flash of light. But I didn't have to get that far through the prayer because just as soon as I said, God, if you exist, this totally otherworldly experience came over my body where from um, starting from the center of my body, going up through um, my chest and through my shoulders and down my arms and up through my neck into my head and then down all the way through my legs, there was this tingling feeling that I'd never had before. And it happened right at the moment I said, God, if you exist, boom, it's like all this amazing fireworks started going off in my body. It was a very charismatic experience, a very uh, full of life experience. And I just, I don't know how long it lasted, five seconds maybe. And then I just said, whoa, what was that? I'd never experienced anything like it before. I've never experienced anything like it since. But it was the work of the Holy Spirit to say, David, you 13-year-old, I'm hearing you, and I love you, and I want you to know Jesus more fully in your life. And in a real way, it was a new beginning for me, a new beginning into walking more deeply into the love of Jesus. As we think about um, the work of Jesus in our lives, we're so grateful that Jesus is not only fully human, but also uh, fully divine as well. It's like as if we look at the very micro lesson of the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit brings Jesus into humans' lives, we can take that lens and, and zoom way out. And look, not, if we were to say, oh, well, the Holy Spirit's a teacher, what are the two major lectures of the Holy Spirit who is this teacher? Well, the Spirit brings Christ down to earth as a human. And this is the true humanity of Jesus. But then it's also the Spirit that lifts Christ up and shows Jesus' divinity, showing the true divinity of Jesus. And whichever lecture from this teacher we experience first, for many of us is experiencing the divinity of Jesus first, but whichever one you experience, I pray that you experience them both. In this time of Christmas, you know that because Jesus was so fully human, so fully brought into this world, you will know 
the love of God more fully as a human, but also because Jesus was so fully divine that you will know that divine love of God that forgives and lives in us more fully than we could ever do on our own. So it is the work of the Holy Spirit to bring Jesus deeply into your life and into my life this Christmas time. We love you so much. And this Christmas, we miss you and we're praying for you. But I do wish you a Merry Christmas. Oh, come.